You know, I have always had a deep connection with Sublime because their music blends laid back vibes with powerful raw lyrics that speak to the human experience. You know, Bad Fish, in my opinion, is a perfect example of this. It captures the feeling of being stuck and searching for a way out of life's challenges. The song uses vivid metaphors like being a bad fish or a parasite to express the struggle of feeling trapped and the hope of finding freedom. What makes Bad Fish so compelling is its contrast between relaxed reggae rhythm and the deep introspective lyrics. It's a song that resonates with those moments when we feel like we're just keeping our heads above water. And as I explore these lyrics with you today, I want to uncover how they inspire us to face our challenges with resilience and courage. So imagine this. You're cruising through life thinking everything's fine. You're moving along and suddenly you're hit with a wave of reality. It's like the moment you realize that you're not as free as you thought you were. When you grab a hold of something or maybe someone grabs a hold of you and it feels like you'll never break free. You start to feel like a parasite creeping through the night, trying to find your place, your purpose, but you're stuck. You know, these lyrics from Sublime's Bad Fish reflect the struggles many of us face. Now think about this. When you grab a hold of me, you tell me that I'll never be set free, but I'm a parasite Creep and crawl, I step into the night. These lines speak to the feeling of being trapped in a cycle, in a place where you feel you don't belong, like you're just existing and not living. How many of us have felt this way? That we're truly crawling through life, not truly making strides, not truly being who we're meant to be. Now, what if we reframe this? What if instead of seeing ourselves as parasites, we see ourselves as survivors? A parasite, after all, is tenacious. It finds its way to keep going, to keep living, even in the harshest conditions. And sometimes when we feel like we're just creeping and crawling through life, that's when we're actually learning the most from ourselves. You see, we're learning how to adapt, how to keep going even when the night is darkest. And that's not weakness, that's resilience. Two pints of booze. Tell me, are you a bad fish too? Ain't got no money to spend? I hope the night would never end. Here, we see a scene of escape, of trying to numb the pain, to forget the struggles for just a little while. But the question, are you a bad fish too, suggests an even deeper connection. It's a recognition that we're not alone in our struggles. We all have moments where we feel like bad fish, when we're just floating aimlessly, hoping the night will never end because the day brings responsibilities, challenges, and the harsh light of reality. Yet, in these moments of shared despair, there's also a possibility of shared strength. When we reach out, when we connect with others who are also struggling, we realize that we don't have to face our challenges alone. There's a powerful sense of camaraderie in knowing that others are swimming in the same waters, facing the same currents, and together we can help each other navigate through the storms. Lord knows I'm weak. Won't somebody get me off of this reef? This is perhaps the most poignant line of the song. It's a cry for help, a moment of vulnerability where we admit that we're not as strong as we want to be, that we need help from someone to pull us up out of the depths. It's a recognition that we all have our breaking points, and that's okay. There's no shame in asking for help. In fact, it takes incredible strength to admit that we need it. But let's think about this reef for a moment. A reef is a beautiful yet dangerous place. It's full of life, but it's also full of sharp edges, hidden dangers, and treacherous waters. When we find ourselves stuck on a metaphorical reef, if we can feel like we're surrounded by beauty, then we can enjoy it because we're so focused 
on something other than the dangers. But maybe, just maybe, the wreath isn't just a trap. Maybe it's a place to rest, to gather our strength before we swim again. It's a place to reflect on where we've been and where we want to go next. Baby, you're a big blue whale. Grab the reef when all duck diving fails. Here, the imagery shifts to something grander. A big blue whale. And the whale, with all its power and majesty, represents something larger than life. Something that we can all aspire to be. Yet even the whale needs the reef when things get tough. This reminds us that no matter how strong we are, no matter how much we've accomplished, we all have moments where we need to hold on to something stable, something solid. It's a humbling reminder that strength doesn't mean we never need help. It means knowing when to reach out and grab the reef to avoid sinking. I swim, but I wish I'd never learned. The water's too polluted with germs. I dive deep when it's 10 feet overhead, grab the reef underneath my bed. These lines reflect the feeling of regret, of which wishing we'd never learned to swim through life because the water, our surroundings, our circumstances are too polluted, too full of negativity and challenges. And sometimes it feels easier to wish we'd never started the journey than to keep swimming in what seems like toxic waters. But here's the thing. Even when we dive deep, even when we're in over our heads, we still instinctively reach for that reef underneath our bed, that safe place, that comfort zone that we can rely on. But what if we see this not as a sign of defeat, but as a testament to our instincts for survival. We know how to find that place of safety when we need it, and that's something to be proud of. You know, we've learned to navigate the polluted waters, to find our way even when everything seems against us. That's not weakness, that's wisdom. Ain't got no quarrels with God, ain't got no time to grow old. Lord knows I'm weak, won't somebody get me off this reef? These closing lines reflect a sense of peace with the bigger picture. There's no quarrel with God, no fight against the inevitabilities of life. But there's also an urgency, a realization that time is short and that we cannot afford to waste it. It's a plea to be freed from the things that hold us back, that keep us from living fully. But what if we see this reef not just as a trap, but as a place of transformation? Maybe getting off the reef isn't just about being saved by someone else. Maybe it's about realizing that we have the strength to push off from it ourselves. Maybe the reef is a place where we gather strength, where we learn the lessons we need to learn before we can swim freely again. So, what's the message here? Well, I think it's life is full of challenges, full of moments where we feel like we're just barely hanging on, like we're stuck on a reef with no way out. But those moments don't define us. What defines us is how we choose to respond to them. Do we see ourselves as weak, or do we recognize the strength it takes to keep going even when the waters are rough? Remember, it's okay to ask for help to grab onto the reef when we need it. But also remember that we have the power to push off from that reef, to swim towards something better. Life is about more than just surviving. It's about thriving, even in the face of adversity. So keep swimming, keep pushing, and trust that every stroke is bringing you closer to the shore. In the end, it's not about avoiding the reefs in our lives, it's about learning how to navigate them with grace, strength, and resilience. And when we do that, we find we're not just surviving. We are truly living. Thank you.